day, my friends, God bless all of you. And the blessing which God blesses with, He gives to us, is not simply an insignificance of an answer of our needs, our necessities. Oh, he got a job, he was healed from an infirmity, he was blessed with marriage. No such thing. God wants you to be a blessing. He wants you to be a blesser, better said, instead of one who searches for blessings. What do you prefer? To be a blessing or to be dependent on others to receive blessings? God wants you to be a blesser, a fountain itself, so that He, God, may spring up through you in the lives of your family members, your neighbors, your co-workers, your colleagues at school, wherever you may be, you will spread, spread the light which will flow from out of you. This is what God wants. But of course, of course, many people are living a piece of hell and they want to get out of the situation. They are being suffocated by their problems. It's the wife who perhaps was betrayed. She was cheated on by her husband. The husband who was cheated on by his wife. So God, just look at how God treats a human being. Look how prophet, the prophet of God, prophet Isaiah, in the name of God speaks, speaks, in a clear manner, a strong and direct way for those who are suffering, for people who are fallen, those who are desperate, for the people who say, I'm tired of being myself, I've had it with being a trash, a, an unrecyclable trash. But to God, you are extremely important. He wants to use what you are, your being, in order to make out of you this fountain. Just look how prophet Isaiah expresses God's will perfectly. He says, Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. How can I sing if I am crying, I'm desperate, I'm sad, I'm downcast, I'm needy, I'm like this, I'm like that. How can I sing? You might ask God. But just look at God's promise for you. Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. A barren typifies those who have nothing to give. These are people who are dry, dry fountains. Fountains in the desert which have no water, not a single drop of water. The barren is that woman today who does not give birth to children. But it's a lot more than that. A barren here refers to a person who has nothing to give, nothing, absolutely nothing to, gi to give. He's empty, absolutely empty. And he only has what to ask, to seek, to beg for daily bread. But God says to the barren, to this barren who has nothing to give, he tells her to sing. It's like a contradiction, isn't it? But no, God is saying prophetically, He is prophesying, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, you who have not had children, break forth into singing. Just look. God is speaking to the barren. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, which means God knows what's best for us. We want to be joyful. We want to explode in joy, to express this joy. 
to break forth into singing. Everybody wants this. God is saying to you who have been barren, be it a man, be it a woman, we're not dealing with just a woman, but also a man. Not only the barren of not being able to give birth to children, but also in your personal life, you are barren. Everything you do, it goes wrong, it goes south. You've tried several ways, forms, options, but everything, everything goes wrong. You consider yourself barren. But he says, break forth into singing, O barren. You who have not labored with child, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, you who have not had the pain of labor. It's not only a woman who have not labored and they're, they're, they're barren, but also men who never had a chance to start their own business, to start their own entrepreneurship, to be someone, to be respected by others. He says, sing, break forth into singing, cry aloud. For more, look at this, for more are the children of the desolate. Do you see here that is talking about a desolate woman. He's not referring to the barren. Now he's addressing the desolate. The barren who spoke about, but the desolate is a woman who lives, we could say, in the desert. She has no one, not a single man, not a single man to lead her to give birth. She's lonely. She lives in loneliness. Perhaps this is your situation. You live in desolation and anguish and sadness and depression and desperation. You live with a profound sadness in the soul because you've been despised by everything and everyone, but not by God. He says, For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. More are the children of the desolate, not the single woman. Because the single, she... She bears children, but he's addressing the desolate, the lonely. She's alone. She's alone, rather. She has no one. More are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. Then he says, enlarge the place of your tent. Because back then people would live in tents. Enlarge the place of your tent, which means extend your tent as large as possible because there will be rooms, there will be children, there will be people, adults, the house, the tent will be full. Which means God is saying, enlarge your vision, your understanding. I want to do great things in your life. Amplify, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. See that God wants you to grow, to be prosperous. God wants to make your name to be honorable, your being to be honorable. And He can only do this when a person feels humiliated, anguished, fallen, despised, disdained. When one is humiliated, has been humiliated. So He takes advantage of evil which hell has caused in the life of the person to do good so that all may know that he and only he is God the Almighty. God wants to do this in your life, my friends. Very well, friends, pay attention. When we address the descent of the Holy Spirit, when we refer to it, the first time the Holy Spirit was sent, it was in Jerusalem, in the Cenacle, and there, only 120 people were baptized, received the Holy Spirit. 120 people. But there were many more disciples. There were much more than 500 disciples whom Jesus had back then. 
However, only 120 were baptized. Why? The question is, why was it that the other 500 plus were not baptized? Because only 120 obeyed the word of the Lord. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem. Wait, remain in Jerusalem. For from above, you shall be filled with power. But back then, there was an unstoppable persecution against Christians, against Jesus' disciples. So out of those 500, only 120 remained. The others, the other 400 plus, they stayed out because they fled. They were afraid. They became cowards. They did not want to wait. So only the 120 who were faithful, loyal to the Lord, these were filled with the Holy Spirit. This Sunday, it will be no different. Only those who are prepared, only those who believe, only those who sacrifice themselves for this greater objective, which is to receive the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if you, if you are that person who is determined, determined to receive the Holy Spirit this Sunday, so then you are determined, you are the determined because the Holy Spirit Himself already called and chose you. And the Lord Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So on this day, those who are preparing themselves, washing their clothes, preparing their best set of clothes, bringing a ring, a ring which does not need to be made of gold, but any ring, it can be of metal. What matters is that you bring this ring because when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will put this ring on your finger and say, now I have a husband. As the Holy Scripture reads, the Holy Scripture reads, God says, I am your husband, which means I am close to you. I'm with you. I'm one with you. Just as a husband and wife become one body, I will be one spirit with you. It's written, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Which means God is inviting. Not everybody obviously has ears to hear the voice of God. Not everyone has that desire, that thirst to meet with the living God. Many are searching money. Many people are searching success. Many people are searching throughout this world outside, the things which the world offers, but those and only those who want to seek that which God offers freely, who is the Holy Spirit, they shall be filled. So the Lord is calling you now, my friends, to fill you with the Holy Spirit to remove this sadness from your soul, to make of you a new creature, as with the testimonies, as with the many testimonies.